Well, March 2013 consumer price index figures are expected to be released today from Angola. For more insight uh, into, re regarding inflation expectations uh, from the Angolan economy and also get, get some insight into the state of the economy right now, Celeste Falconer, Africa analyst at RMB, joining me in studio. Celeste, thanks for your time. Uh, so let's just start off on the inflation front. Uh, we know that inflation ticked up marginally to 9% year in year in February. Uh, what are your expectations for March? We're probably going to expect a very slim, similar number. So we saw that food prices have come down very slightly, similarly for the oil prices over the past month, but not to a large extent. And also inflation remains sticky around the 9% area. I mean, for the past seven months, it's been between 9 and 10%. Mainly the reason why inflation is staying so high is because Angola it has a large import bill. Mm -hmm. They import about 70% of all their goods into the markets. And also to logistically get it to the consumer is also a different difficulty in Angola because of its uh, infrastructure deficit. Mm -hmm. So inflation will remain sticky, I think, around that 9% level. And of course, Angola, yet another example in Africa where it's a, in a nation uh, producing a raw material and importing it in a beneficiated yeah. state. And of course, in, uh, referring to oil, we had uh, Sanangal importing 4.45 billion tons of refined fuel products in 2012, and that an increase from 2011. So now they're looking to cut fuel subsidies. Exactly. Um, what, what it, how's that going to impact inflation, firstly? Well, now we're very confused with whether they're going to cut or not. Mm -hmm. The government now recently came out and said, yes, they are going to cut together with Son and Gold, they said it. But now there's been news stories that they're not going to cut it this year. So we're a bit confused. We're waiting for official statements before we change our inflation view. Yeah. If they do cut fuel subsidies, we don't think it would be by a large extent. It would be very similar like Ghana and like Nigeria, very gradually. slowly, gradually, because of the political risk it can uh, create in the country. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... Um, uh, for now, they're going to stay away from it because of the political risk. Um, and then, of course, the upside risk to our inflation rate will be affected if they do cut subsidies. Yeah, so still waiting for clarity on that. Um, when it comes to monetary policy, I mean, the benchmark interest rate is uh, sitting at 10% uh, and that left unchanged at the March NPC meeting. Um, so what are your expectations when it comes to the bias right now from the central bank? Is it towards uh, stimulating growth or is it towards uh, keeping their eye on inflation? Of course, we still don't know where inflation is going to go. Yeah. Yes. with this fuel subsidy issue. Yes. I think because uh, they came out recently being very confused about the fuel subsidy, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. So I think for now, inflation rates are going to, going to remain stable. They are very happy with their growth rates currently because of good strong oil prices. They, um, their oil production is actually increasing. So they've got a, a nice balancing act with good inflation and also good growth rates. So I think they're going to keep it uh, unchanged for now in the mm -hmm. next MPC meeting. But if inflation doesn't change, if the subsidy does not get cut. I think they have room to maneuver slightly downwards by about 25 basis points mm -hmm. to um, create credit lending into the economy and to expand the economy a bit further. I mean, how well is the banking sector working right now when it comes to feed through from, uh, from the central bank into the banks and of course onto the real economy? Like very other similar countries in Africa, it's not the best filter through. Now, what we have seen now, this um, po policy rate has only been implemented in 2011. We're starting to see it, how it's affecting the commercial banking sector and how lending rates have to some extent come down. But actually, like we see in the rest of Africa, mm -hmm. we, we can see that in East Africa as well, how lending rates remain significantly high. Yeah. So obviously, the, the central bank would want to stimulate credit. So I think that is why we expect some um, monetary easing uh, for the rest of the year. Looking at uh, growth rates, now because you talk about uh, the fact that the oil sector is really doing well given the fact that they've been able to increase production at a time when oil prices have been elevated. Yes, we know that oil prices in fact recently have started to come back but um, how's the economy doing when it comes to, to growth this year? I mean, what are your expectations when it comes to key drivers of growth? So the key driver will be your oil sector. Unfortunately, Angola is not a very diversified economy. The agricultural sector was damaged during the civil war so unfortunately it is their main beneficiary for the for the economy. But we expect the technical problems that we saw in the oil sector last year, it has been being fixed and we see production increasing. It's currently at about 1.7 million barrels per day, mm -hmm. which is a strong rate for, for Angola at the moment. Um, if oil prices remain elevated, we expect um, our growth rate to come in at 
we're around 8% this year, but that obviously does depend on what's happening with for, the oil prices. Yeah, for such a large economy, I mean, that's, you know, in Africa, one of the larger economies, that's fantastic growth rate. But as you say, there's that oil price risk, yes. uh, which is, continues to be exposed to. Infrastructure is a big issue yes. in Angola. I mean, just looking at their sole refinery in Luanda, operating at a 20% capacity. I mean, yes. why is that, given the fact that they're still so reliant on ref refi refined uh, fuel imports? So there's a lot of mismanagement with funding infrastructure. They do fund a lot, actually quite a substantial amount every year into infrastructure. We do see it being or happening. We actually go to the country and we can see the infrastructure being created, especially when you go into Luanda. Yeah. So it's happening. So you're seeing it there. You're seeing it. But there is some mis mismanagement. So unfortunately, you get some of the, the money lost into the system. Um, however, there are implementing um, issues like, for instance, wanting to issue a euro bond, a $1 billion euro bond, to be able to invest into infrastructure. They are having difficulties with their refinery, um, and they are going to actually increase the infrastructure financing into creating the next refinery, which is in Lobito. Um, but it is taking its time, and it unfortunately is being delayed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that, uh, you know, you continue to import fuel, and you've got a refinery sitting there at 20% uh, capacity. Uh, there's also potential to, to to export liquefied natural gas. Yes. Uh, where does Angola stand with regard to that development? Unfortunately, we saw delays now into investment into the, the LNG or liquefied natural gas plant. Um, it's going to cost the country about 10 billion US dollars over the next few years to be, to be able to, to, to benefit out of it. So unfortunately, we don't see the production of gas increasing significantly. Um, the, the numbers and the timing of it is also difficult to say because they were supposed to already have produced by now. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, so. It's a story of delays that I'm hearing exactly. right now. So how do you feel about the administration right now and really the promises that they make and what they put on the table and what's actually really putting in, uh, what's really been put into action? I think to put a positive spin on that one mm -hmm. is that it has um, been much better than what we have seen in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so they are increasing their management, especially if we look at the oil revenues. They are trying to implement a sovereign wealth fund like we have seen now in uh, Ghana. So we know the government is trying to head into that way. Um, a lot of the the countries are experiencing mismanagement when it comes to large resources like that, specifically in your oil um, uh, countries. That leads to say, what is East Africa, East Africa going to do with their gas and oil expo exploration? Yeah. But yes, mismanagement is unfortunately the big problem here, and that also does filter through into the infrastructure deficit.